Hey, it's Clint Garrett, Ace Networker, and we're going to talk about connecting switches together. Now, we connect multiple switches together on a network, oftentimes a small to a medium size or even a very large network will have multiple switches on it, and there needs to be a way to connect these switches together directly to each other. So we haven't talked about this yet, but we're going to get into the types of connections and the types of cables that you use to connect two or more switches together on a computer network. So stay tuned. Connecting two or more switches on a computer network is a very common functionality. By connecting two or more switches together, we gain a larger amount of connectivity and benefits on a computer network. One of the first things that occurs from connecting multiple switches together on the same network is that you increase the size of the broadcast domain. You've got more nodes connected together. You also create a larger physical distance on the network, so essentially a larger network. There are essentially two ways to make the connections between two or more switches. Uplink ports, whereby you connect the uplink port on one switch to a normal networking port on the other switch using a straight through cable, and port to port using normal networking switch ports, typically on the front of the switch, using a crossover cable. Now I'd like to point out that if you don't yet understand the different types of networking cables and their pin layouts inside each type of cable. In this case, we're talking about straight through and crossover cables. Make sure to check out this video where I go through the different types of cables and how the internal wires and pins are arranged within each. So let's take a look at the first type of connection, the uplink port connection between two switches. I'll show you how that works, then we'll look more closely at the more commonly used connection method used between two switches, the crossover cable using the normal networking ports, again, typically in the front of the switch. When you use an uplink port, nine times out of 10, the manufacturer will clearly mark that port on the physical switch as being the uplink. If you choose to use the uplink port, you will have to use a straight through type network cable to connect the other switch using one of that other switch's normal network connection ports. These would be the same ports you might connect any other device to that second switch with, like printers, desktops, laptops, servers, etc. There are several different reasons for using the uplink port on one switch connected to a networking port on the other switch. In my experience, you get some benefits in the way the port can be configured in the switch's configuration. Sometimes, again depending on the manufacturer, you can give yourself more real estate by freeing up a normal network port on the front of the switch by using the uplink port for connecting to an adjacent switch on the network. You can often change some specific settings for things like spanning tree and management access access in the configuration settings for the uplink port that you may not have available on the normal network port. To daisy chain multiple switches together using the uplink port method, you will use one uplink port connected to one regular port, then uplink port connected to the next switch's regular port, just like in this diagram. If you choose to work with uplink ports on switches, just take your time and watch that the connections are done correctly. I also wanted to point out that switch manufacturers sometimes call the uplink port by a different name or give it a different label. You may see it called crossover or MDI X or out. Also, I feel like this is a really good time to point something else out on networking switches. If you see a line on the label connecting the uplink port and another port like this, whereby you have a line running to the 2x port, this more often than not means you can only use one port or the other. You cannot use both ports at the same time. And last but not least, when dealing with uplink ports on switches, some manufacturers will place a button next to the uplink port. This button allows you to change the port from an uplink port to a regular port and back again, if you so choose. When you press the button, it changes the pin layout inside the port to make the port either uplink or regular network port. This leads us to the other type of connection between switches using regular network port to regular network port using a crossover cable. Now this is actually the more common type of connection used on the fly by network technicians, admins, and engineers. If you choose to connect two switches together using their regular network ports, again typically on the front of a physical switch, you have to use a crossover cable between the two. You cannot use a straight through cable. This is because if you inadvertently use a straight through cable, both switches will attempt to send their data on the second pair of wires. Pin 
pins 3 and 6, and they will try to listen for data on the first pair of wires, pins 1 and 2. A crossover cable reverses the pins on each end of the cable, so one end will be wired with the T568A standard, and the other end will be the T568B standard. Again, Check out this video showing the different types of cable pin layouts if you don't understand those yet. So when connecting switches together, those are the two types of connections you can use. Now there's one other thing I wanted to point out here. On most newer Layer 2, Layer 3, and multi-layer switches, you will have a feature, and it may be physically marked on or next to each port, but you will have a feature called MDI-X. The MDI stands for Media Dependent Interface, which is for a regular port on a switch. When you see MDI-X, this means it's capable of being an uplink port. Most newer switches have a feature called Auto MDI-X, which actually senses which type of cable is connected and can change from MDI regular port to MDI-X uplink port if it needs to. Now this is more often due to human error, but I've seen a lot of technicians just use whatever type of network cable they have available and they rely on the auto MDI-X to make the correct determination for them. I don't recommend this as you need to know what you're using on your network and how things are connected, but that's neither here nor there. In troubleshooting connectivity issues on a network, if the connection isn't working, one of the first things you look at is the MDI, MDI-X and determining if you're using the correct cable on the connection and if the cable is good or not. So that's the basics of connecting switches together. If you like this video, make sure to smash the thumbs up button and I'll see you on the next video. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready?